Today I was thinking that I might make the greatest automation mod of all time. And this is the base which we're going to start with. This thing that's not like any other vehicle in the world whatsoever. Now I could go over everything about this car from the sort of suspension it has to the big lumpy pushrod V8 it has. But none of that really matters. I could even show you what this thing is like in BeamNG with how much power it has, the great sound it makes, the braking, the turn in, the lovely amounts of oversteer this thing creates and just how controllable it is. But once again, this does not matter. See, the big issue with automation is the fact that they're just one simple collision mesh. You can have certain things breakable, but it's not a great system. To be honest, there's a reason why automation has its own category. And yes, it also has just by far and away the most amount of mods, but that's because they're easy to make. Mine today, not gonna be quite so easy. What I plan to do is to turn this into basically a full-fledged BMNG car. Now you may be asking, Phil, what do you mean by that? What's the plan? Well, I'm gonna take everything here and kind of transplant it into everything. Here. Basically take the mesh and then grab a vehicle like this and put the body, just all of the flex bodies in there. Well, what car options do we have? I want it to be old, so it's gonna have to be something like this or the Gavril Basto. The problem is, is, well, we get into suspension issues. That's a solid axle. That's a solid axle. Solid axle. Because this is the sort of suspension it has. Now, this is a weird sort of setup. And the most that this would be close to is what we would consider a double wishbone. The problem is, there's no double wishbone for suspension on the rear of basically any normal vehicle. In all my searching, this is seemingly the only one that has it. As we go under here, we can see we got a lower wishbone and an upper wishbone. Perfect. Uh, well, it's also got push rod. Weird. It's also a transaxle, which is not like that other car. It's also rather new, and if we go in and have a look at how much this weighs, we can see it's nearly 1,500 kilos. And the Shelby Cobra weighs only a little over a ton, so this is not gonna work. So I'm giving up on the independent rear suspension issue. The plan is the Miramar. So let's go into our unpacked folder and make the perfect automation mod. Don't ask questions. Hey, new viewers, how many subscribers do you think I have? Well, go have a look. We're also gonna call this like an AC underscore KO. Then we're gonna go to the Miramar and we're gonna start off with not so much this right now, but instead we're gonna go down and grab the main J beam to start with. Then we're gonna grab our new mod and we're just gonna start dragging things across. First, no, don't need the dot car. Uh, all of the DA, uh, sorry, the DDS files. My brain is not working very well. And if we go into here, we can grab the DAE file. Now, let's go ahead and call this the uh, bay underscore C, since that's what we're gonna call this car, I reckon. Replace all of the author names with mine. Change a few of the other little details here. And this all looks good. We should probably change everything relating to this. Now, we're gonna go in and drag across the Miramar body. Do the same little tweaks and change everything Miramar with Basie. We are, however, going to be keeping all of the nodes. So that'll make our job a lot easier. This is where we're gonna get a little bit more technical. As we can see here under flex bodies, which is where the meshes are draw uh, drawn from, whatever. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of things in here which just don't exist at the moment. If we have just a look here, we have the body, but like the wrong names and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we also probably want to break this up. So let's go select all by trait, loose geometry. And you can see that there's, they just got 
of hidden everywhere. Delete them. Then we're gonna have to start dividing this into vehicle parts and this is gonna get a little bit messy. So let's grab the body, change the name of that to be a little bit more consistent. We're going to then go in, we're gonna select just the dash area. You know what? We can grab all of the interior just to make it a little bit easier to move everything eventually. Then with that selected, we're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna go in, control I, delete vertices, go back to the original, delete vertices. And now we have the body and the interior as separate objects. Perfect, job's all done, right? No, not yet. We're now gonna have to do that for the uh, the hood, the door and the door liners, the trunk. Uh, lights are gonna have to go as well. The exhaust is gonna have to be modified. Uh, oh, I just realized I've also deleted the exhaust. Shoot, damn it. Later that same evening. And just like that, I've separated every individual part that you could ever want to realistically separate. And this has taken a little bit of time, so it's not, you know, nothing. And then hopefully default drag the body out. Would ya look at that? It's back to front. Rotate 180 degrees. And now it's all going to be perfectly done. Yes, good. Except it is too low. So, I mean, we're going to be editing the nodes, but we may as well get the mesh done easily. I think we might actually, you know what, screw it. I am going to run the front suspension in the front and rear, and then I'm just going to edit a version of the uh, suspension as well. So let's grab the Miramar DAE. Uh, for now, we're only going to take the suspension and then in here, we're going to control V it in. Then we're going to go ahead and duplicate this and move it to the rear. Front suspension. Uh, wide track independent front suspension. Hell yeah, man. Except no wheels. Uh, we might look into that. Next, we're going to grab the bonnet, which is misnamed the hood. Give it the correct name and then replace all Miramar with our new name. And this is where we're gonna get into things that are a little bit more tricky because we're now starting to deal with hood latches and whatnot. If we go in here, the hood lifts forwards. Oh, well, have no fear. Turns out that the AC Cobra also has the engine hood go forwards. Or Shelby, you know what? I haven't actually looked into the difference between AC and Shelby, but I probably will at some point. But yeah, you get the idea when I say either or. Put the bonnet in and would you look at that? Do we have... Ooh, this is going to be a little bit tricky to find, isn't it? Because uh, if we have a look at the collision mesh, the latch should be right there. Oh, no, good. It works. Perfect. Um... Now, <laughs> this is something I completely didn't think of. I'm guessing the latches, yeah, attached on a radiator support, which is not here at all. But that's fine. We can at least have the uh, radiator support in here without any flex bodies. And perfect in every conceivable way. There is nothing wrong with this. So clearly, yes, there is issues. We will get to alignment later though. Can you go back down? Good, thank you. Let's try to figure out why these wheels are not coming in. Oh, okay, we're missing a thing for wheel data. Wheel data does exist here. I suppose I could just grab wheel data from this. Then under our suspension, we'll just kind of stick it in the middle somewhere. Uh, I think right there. Front spindles. Oh wait, that was called spindles? Weird. Hey, look at that! It's worked! And do we have steering? Yes, we do! Fantastic! It's all good! Now let's go do that to the rear! Cam, so suspension front. Control C, Control V, it's gonna make it a copy. Let's make that an R. And the only thing we're really needing to change here for now is get rid of steering. Change the variables all to be rear related. We use node offset to move everything backwards a bit. Please don't do that. I just realized what I did wrong. I'm an idiot. Uh, all of these nodes got the same name. Uh, so let's go ahead change all of these. 
with ours. And now with all of those changed, hopefully, I mean, the beams will be connected in the wrong parts of the body, but control R, we have ourselves independent rear suspension. Let's bring up beams. Yep, okay, so beams are there. They don't mind being long, but they don't like being short. That is, that's weird. And then we're gonna start looking at uh, which nodes go where? In fact, actually, you know what? Hold on. We d I don't think we need you at all. So goodbye to you. Make the body invisible. And then we're going to start comparing nodes. This is all of them connected to each other. Then we've got the attached to body section. F10RR. Ah, F10 is about here. So that's right in the middle. Uh, we have R1. Okay, so F10 will become F1 or R1. If you can't quite tell, this is gonna take a really long time. Uh, and every single time I have to find it so I can find a rel- Well, here we go, relative one. So that is in front of the axle. Instead, we'll go the F4R. Oh, it's another one that's directly above. Uh, you know what? Nah, this one's gonna be attached to TB1. Okay, that's done. Oh, that took a lot more than what it should have. Let's go ahead, put in the front suspension because I had it out to make it a little bit easier to see what I was doing. Then a rear suspension. Ugh, doesn't look like it's attached. No, it is attached. Oh, that's right, because I did the steering thingy me, Bobby. Let's move all of this forwards a bit. Close off suspension. Then all we want to do is grab all of the nodes in here and move them forwards. And maybe even these. In fact, actually, you know what? Hold on. We can drag in the body. If we go ahead, export this now as an OBJ. Then in here. No, hold on. Editor? Editor? Uh, open the new OBJ that we have. It'll... There we go. Good. So now we know what we want to grab and how to move things. Now, if we hit control R, we won't have the wheels obstructed. Piff. Oh. Broken beams. You know what? For now, that's fine. Everything else seems to be sticking fairly well. Well, I was able to stop the suspension from breaking. What I ended up doing was just removing a few things eventually until they uh, stopped breaking. So I think I removed like four things and that got it to work. Uh, what we might do is start by, I think we, we really don't need that. So d can I delete those? Good. That seems to be just about as dangerous as what we want it to be. We're now going to, I mean, I, I'm going to try this one. I don't know if it's going to work, but if we select, maybe we'll go into quad view for this because I don't want to grab the stuff around the wheel well. I just want to grab basically this part here. I'm thinking here, a little bit of there, hopefully holding shift. Nope, holding shift in quad view does not work. God damn it. So let's drag you back into place, drag you down into place. Now let's hit refresh on the bonnet and hit refresh on the body and then drag the node section over again. Then back in BMNG, we refresh. Uh, okay. Then if we're lucky, hey, it looks like it's working, but where is, there it is, I see it. It's making it difficult. Then select that. Look at that. Oh, well, that wasn't meant to happen. Uh, the other thing is, is I want to change the pivot point. I wonder how it pivots. Does it pivot on just those nodes? Can I move that back to here? Uh, it does seem to pivot along H4s. All right, well, I suppose that's fine. Uh, we should grab those nodes and move them back. Much, much later. Well, it is the next day. And if we have a look at my clock down here, you can see that it is the middle of the day because I was up until about 4 a.m. last night getting this thing to the current state that it's in. As you can see, it has uh, like a, a working hood for the most part. It's got working doors. It's got a semi-functional trunk. But yeah, uh, no engine. It's because I've not done the engine yet. And that's because the engine in this one was kind of special. It was the big 427 from Ford. 
Now, we didn't really get this engine in Australia, so I don't really know much about it. All I know is that it's like a 6.9 liter something uh, V8 big engine. And luckily, I don't have to make one. I don't even have to use the one that was in the car. That's because it already exists, basically. This, by default, comes with a 4.5 liter, but if we have a look inside here, a 6.9 liter. A good thing ruined by a period. Oh. Anyway, here's the engine. Looks exactly the same. Now all we have to do is make sure that this thing has the right amount of power. By default, it has 262 PS, which is basically horsepower, but it should come with 355 approximately and 420 foot pin. Hey, blaze it, except I don't want this to actually blaze. That would be problematic. Stock long block? What about like a performance long block? Wow. Okay. That did give me a lot of power. In fact, actually, like, way too much power. Can I, like, reduce the amount of power we got here? This is ridiculous. There's too much of a power jump between stage one and stage two. So we're gonna go stage one. Then we're gonna go a race exhaust manifold. We're a little bit short there, but we're a lot short on torque. So even though I want this intake manifold, I think we're gonna have to go something a little bit more powerful. And... Immediately, too much power. After lots of fiddling, we're able to be just a little bit short and a little bit short again. But these numbers are fairly equal in their uh, shortness of their main goal. So I feel that this is probably the best line out. I mean, it's, it's not a huge amount of power. When we're talking about a vehicle that's about a ton, this is not too bad. But now, if I want to put this in here... Well, there's a little bit of a trick, because this engine is not for this vehicle, it is a common vehicle engine. So that means that all I have to do is put that engine name into the slot type for this vehicle. If we go into the pickup frame JD, that's where the engine slot should be. And pick up engine. Now, if we go into slots for our vehicle, engine will be right there perfect then it pops up and we got ourselves the 6.9 liter of the eight no problems whatsoever and now i am just trying to figure out why it won't drive so <laughs> let's go into ui apps we're gonna add in power train visualizer and I see that we have power going to the clutch, to the transmission, to the transfer case, to the torsion reactor, whatever that is. Uh, then a drive shaft, a differential, and then the wheel axles, which don't go out to the wheels themselves. Half shafts go out to wheel axle RL. Uh, that should go to the wheels. I don't know why it doesn't. Let's try to see where else the half shafts are drawn from. It's also in suspension, apparently. Okay. And here we have it. Okay. I reckon if we just copy that, go back into our differential, which we've put into our car and paste that in there, this should work after a quick refresh. Hey, oh my God, please. Oh, it's driving. Yes. Oh my God. This is glorious. After all of this work, it's been... I, I, like, I started this 24 hours ago. Oh my god, it's amazing. And also that, like, hood shaker. I ended up getting rid of the carburetor altogether and just decided to run this hood shaker, which I uh, made from default. It gets a little bit wacky if you try adding a, um... a supercharger on it, but I still think it's pretty darn cool. Oh my god, this thing is... Oh! Really hard to drive. If only... Making that a uh, Napier Railton from scratch was as easy as this thing, but I reckon I can probably pump that one out a little bit quicker now. <laughs> Much like the real thing, this thing is actually really hard to drive. The only thing that I really have a bit of an issue with is the fact that the back end doesn't really pinch up very much like the real car. I think we've busted the rear suspension. 
It's a little bit wacky. Uh, also along with this, there's going to be another mod that I'm going to release, and it's all of these grills. And as you can see, this grill kind of like goes inwards like that. There's going to be a new automation mod up on the workshop. It's going to be these grills. I probably would have had a much uglier looking car if I didn't make this mod. Uh, so I'm glad I did that, and you guys will get to try it out. I'm not really happy with the boot. What I might do is get rid of the stripes altogether and then make a, uh, skin thing instead. That's fine. I want to give this a proper try at something. And for this, I'm thinking I'm going to do a race against other cars. Now, I've not done this in a very long time, and I get the feeling that some of these cars might be a little bit faster than mine, so let's see how we can do. Let's start her up. Get her into cabin mode. Get it into gear. Even if we're a little bit late there. I don't know where my red line is. I haven't dialed in <laughs> the gauges. Oh, hello. Oh, this thing loves to oversteer. Oh, lots of power. Did they just... No, I have some light collision physics on. Damn it. I don't know if this car is really drivable, to be honest. It's seemingly problematic. I'm also getting hunted around like crazy. What is even happening? What are you guys doing? I've given myself like three laps, so I have time to overtake them and safely. Oh my God, what the hell? What a dick move. Oh my God, he just pit maneuvered me. <laughs> this car sucks, not gonna lie. Oh, I'm in sixth now. That's not great. Uh, six, back into fifth. Then into fourth, because that guy ain't got nothing on the big block. <laughs> oh my god. All right, you know what? This thing needs more tuning. Let's do a little bit of tuning whilst these guys get a little bit of practice in, because seemingly they need it more than I do. Except they don't go off on their own. Whatever. Let's try driving this just around the track at all right now. Lots of wheel spin, but... Already, with two degrees rear toe in, this thing actually becomes very controllable already. Okay, I've not actually driven this at all, so I thought I'd push it there a little bit, and that was a mistake. Okay, let's instead bring it out to the old Le Mans track, which is something that this vehicle might have seen a few times at the very least. Uh, how do I switch into cabin camera? There we go. All right, powering it over here. Through the Dunlop Tunnel. Oh, start braking. We're doing okay. You know what? Nice and easy glide down on the brakes. A slow turn in. <laughs> and a slow turn out. Try to power on without losing control. And we're going to see if we hit that rev limiter or not. Oh, please. Okay. Now, going onto the Moss and straight. And then we're just we're gonna push it. I know we're running uh, like oil starvation. Not entirely sure why, but uh, into top gear now. Now this thing should not be reaching anywhere near 200 miles per hour, which is 320 kilometers an hour. But we should be getting to the high 200s, maybe. 260, 270. Oh, we're overheating. Uh. 280. No, that's about 180, just shy of 180 miles per hour. Oh, this thing is dangerous. And I love it. <laughs> oh my god. All right, well, I'm going to show this to my friends and say hello to my new car that is flawless in every single way. Oh, sick. Do you like? You want to see something yes. cool? Well, they're a little bit jammed at the moment. But, yo, that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, even. Hold on. Give it a second. On has <laughs> Beam and G wheels on it. Yep. I mean, Beam and G wheels you can do by default. Uh, now that's a default thing. But this mod is actually a lot more complicated than that. Got doors. Yep. It's even got a Beam and G engine. Very, very similar to the actual thing. So what I've done here is I basically oh, wow. exported from automation. Well, turn the turn your game audio down. Nah. 
Anyway, I exported it from automation, then took the 3D model and chucked the rest away, and made it all with, uh... <laughs> VMG stuff. What do you think? I really like it. I mean, I, I was thinking, you know who would like an American, like, kind of flawed vehicle? Vens. Vens would. Yes. <laughs> oh god, this car is hard to control. Yeah, it's as if it's not a great vehicle. No, I mean, this vehicle is it's the perfect automation mod. Nothing is wrong with this whatsoever. Oh, I just got I just got sucked into a fence. <laughs> I, I got sucked into the fence and all my textures went away. Yeah, I'm not actually sure exactly what's happening there. I'm gonna have to look into that one. But yeah, for some reason, when the tires go, they change material. Oh my god, I can't drive in a straight line. For God's sake! Oh, oh I really? got got sucked into a fence too. Is there gonna? Are you gonna have a race with these? Like a <laughs> do like, a race um, with these? That could like be a fun. spec race, like an AC Cobra spec race. I mean, I'd have to fix what's wrong with the car, I reckon, first. But this mod is probably going to get released as is, like, as jank it as it is right now. I, 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 the jank I, adds to it. This car is out of my skill range. I'm surprised you were able to drive so well. What's that supposed to mean? The car sucks, that's what it's supposed to mean. Oh, this sucks? This is pretty good, compared to some of my vehicles that I've built. I mean, this it's not really an automation car, to be honest. I mean, you remember my, uh, oh, <laughs> remember my uh, race cars? You are? Remember my race cars, like the Pikes Peak one? Oh, God, we're talking years ago now, man. I don't remember. Yeah, and you were like, man, Vince, your car sucks. And I'm like, <laughs> and, uh, sounds and about you right. about how bad yours, were, yours was, and then you drove mine, and you're like, wow, yours is way worse. And that I drove was the yours old 1916, easy. right? Oh, my God, yeah. you had a wipeout. Yeah, I died. You've got a bit of a speed bonus on- oh my god, I can't accelerate in a straight line, apparently. Why would you do that to me? Oh, my suspension is- <laughs> You clipped me and you somehow managed to oh. destroy my suspension. Not on my screen, man, my bad. Want me to slow up? I mean, you are quite a ways ahead of me, so what do you- Overall, out of 10, compared to, say, like, the Bastion, what do you give this car out of 10? Ten. I like the wonkiness as well. It's realistic. <laughs> Thanks for lying. And uh, I hope everyone else has enjoyed this video that has now taken me well over 24 hours. I am exhausted. I'm gonna go now. But in the meantime, I would like to thank my channel members. And that specifically includes all my mid-tier channel members. You guys are all very much appreciated. For the rest of you, I'll catch you all next time. Mm, goodbye. Watch out for filming 85. Yeah, that guy's a... he's, he's an he's imposter. He's an imposter. Sus.